At this point I'm convinced that someone who worked on Black Ops 3 sold their soul to the devil to keep this game alive forever. Most Call of Duty games tend to be entirely dead with empty lobbies in almost every game mode after about 2 years, maybe 3 if we're really pushing it. But Black Ops 3 is pushing up on 8 years now and is averaging more players than it did just a few months after its release. Most people I've seen talk about this subject only chalk this up to the continued success of the community driven custom zombies maps, but I think this all goes a lot deeper. When talking about the golden age for Call of Duty, it usually starts with COD 4 Modern Warfare in 2007 and ends after 2012 with Black Ops 2, and between those years Black Ops 1, MW3, and BO2 are three of the top 5 best selling COD titles ever. Those were all undoubtedly great games, but most of us can probably tell you that besides Black Ops 2 on the weekend, all of those games are fairly dead nowadays, so why is Black Ops 3, a game made after the golden era, so much more popular than them these days. Well, if you look at these older games I just mentioned, all of them fall into the era of the Xbox 360 and the PS3. Sure, eventually they were made backwards compatible on the Xbox One, but that's not really going to sell too many extra copies. There's also the fact that these games, even Black Ops 2, are really showing their age graphically, either due to the sometimes great color palette of a Black Ops 1 or just simply the resolution quality. In the age of 4K TVs, ray tracing on consoles, and almost photorealistic games, it's it's not super enticing for newer COD fans who came in after those games had already released to go back and experience them nowadays. And there's the undeniable hacker problem, pretty much every game from the PS3 and Xbox 360 era is just riddled with hackers in every single lobby. So that means every year as people upgraded to the PS4 and the Xbox One, less and less people were plugging in their old consoles to play a game that they didn't really have too much nostalgia for at that point. Nowadays people constantly talk about wanting to go back to the good old days, but at the time it was just another good COD title and people were excited for the next one. But after the golden age ends, a couple years pass by and we're 2015. Obviously we kinda know how that went, you get Chats Vivo and with the upgraded editions, a remastered version of Darius called The Giant. Then the DLC season happens and that was great and Black Ops 3 is regarded as a damn good Call of Duty, especially among Zombies fans. Once its year is completed, BO3 begins to lose players as time goes along, but not as many as in years past because Infinite Warfare, which released in 2016, just wasn't everyone's cup of tea. Its reveal trailer was notoriously one of the most disliked videos on all of YouTube for quite a number of years and I still think it's in the top 10. So instead of playing the newest game, some people just chose to continue on with Black Ops 3. I mean, I know I did for the most part other than Zombies in Spaceland and making things even more interesting, in May of 2017, the unprecedented decision was made to release DLC on an old game. Infinite Warfare performs so poorly, even with a full Call of Duty 4 remaster attached to it, that Activision went with the nuclear option and let Treyarch release Zombies Chronicles on Black Ops 3. Once again breathing life into a game that still wasn't quite dead yet like all the other ones had in the past. With all 9 of those remastered maps, fans no longer really had a reason to go back to Black Ops 1 or Black Ops 2 very often because a lot of the best maps were now on a newer game with more players and less hackers. I really can't overstate just how unprecedented and huge Zombies Chronicles really was. Activision was known for being very rigid in their belief that each title gets their one year and that's it forever. So going back to an older title for a fifth zombies only DLC was massive and obviously it sold well with it still being one of the highest selling PlayStation DLCs of all time. Although that list has kind of been messed up now because of some of the free expansions and bundles for games like Fortnite over the years but you know hey. And for the next few years things were pretty much unchanged for Black Ops 3. We had finally gotten access to custom map making tools and that area of the community did what it always does, creating atrocities like Cum City, but also making truly groundbreaking maps and experiences that fundamentally change how zombies is played. But as with any old game with no more official support, the player counts just slowly tapered off month after month, a few less players every day, slowly fading into obscurity. President Trump tonight imposed drastic new travel restrictions on people wishing to come to the United States from any of 26 Western European countries for the next 30... 
COVID was the best thing to ever happen to Black Ops 3. In the two months the world went into complete lockdown, the player counts on PC more than doubled from averaging 3,800 peak concurrent players every day to over 8,900. From that point on, Black Ops 3 has never fallen that low again. This isn't just a PC phenomenon either, with even console lobbies having players throughout the day every single day. Part of that is due to the fact that if you bought a PS5, it came with a free download for Black Ops 3 if you had PlayStation Network alongside with a few other free games that they gave out. You could keep it forever and that undoubtedly helped a lot of people come back and at least play for a couple of days. There was even a month where PlayStation made the game free to play for the entire month. Even Xbox Game Pass has Black Ops 3 and they basically give away free months for that service like it's candy. There's also deals close to every single month on some platform that drops the price of Black Ops 3, usually plus the entire season pass or the Zombies Chronicles for 60 to 80% off, making it a no-brainer to buy for 10 or $15, especially on PC, which is where Black Ops 3 has always been able to shine. It's a new enough game that it still looks pretty good if you crank up the texture quality and is still old enough to run on lower end hardware on low settings. Somehow it's fallen right into the Goldilocks zone where anyone that isn't using a Chromebook can play it even if it's on 720p 30fps, you can still get on Black Ops 3. Then there's the obvious mod support that with six and a half years of built up progress has done some insane shit. You have entire remakes masters of almost every map ever made, their entire overhaul mods turned Black Ops 3 into Cold War or Modern Warfare 2, huge art projects that are just pretty to look at, horror experiences that are actually scary, fun mods for challenges, meme maps to make you laugh, and literally everything else in between. By the way, I'm thinking of making a video covering the best mods ever created, sort of like an all-star of all the best maps, overhaul mods, graphics, guns, and whatever else is out there, so tell me if you actually would be interested in seeing that. Back to this video though, the creativity of the zombies community just shines through mods, combined with the work that Treyarch already did to make Black Ops 3 as a vanilla game just really good. And all of that has really left Black Ops 3 in a very strange position. Activision can never go back to officially supporting it with newer DLCs. It's just too old and runs on an entirely different engine than any of the games since 2019. Hell, the reason it even got a new security update a few months ago was because that could have developed into a legal issue or resulted in the game being removed from Steam. And on the flip side, that it's just really, really hard to ignore these player numbers. Black Ops 3 is peaking at 11 to 13,000 concurrent players every day, making it 15 to 20% as popular as Warzone 2 on PC. That sounds bad, but when you consider Warzone 2 is a battle royale, is constantly getting updates, new maps, new guns, world events, and is used in every single bit of marketing, plus it's free, it becomes even more impressive that Black Ops 3 is still fighting. The little engine that could, purely running on the backs of a community that refuses to let a good game slip away from them. None of the other Call of Duty titles, even the recent ones, are competing with Black Ops 3 on the same level of player counts. Even including the plutonium player counts, the closest competitor is Black Ops 2, which usually peaks at a combined 5,000 or 6,000 players on the weekend. The next closest are Cold War and Modern Warfare, which only released a couple months ago on Steam and they're averaging about a thousand players each. Everything else just is not even close to where Warzone 2 and Black Ops 3 are at. So where does Black Ops 3 actually go from here? Well, I don't always see it having 13,000 players because unless something drastically changes, the hype does need to cool down a little bit at some point. As people are starting to move away from their PS4 and their Xbox One, the player count on there will slowly diminish. Add in the fact that the multiplayer is an unplayable mess because of the uncontrollable hackers, just most people don't want to go and play that. But there will always be people wanting to play zombies though, especially custom maps and mods, so I think that the instant that we get mod tools on a new game which might happen in 2025 that might be the time when Black Ops 3 can stop holding up the entire zombies community. But who knows, we might not get mod tools for even more years or hell, maybe even never again. And despite all the odds, Black Ops 3 has beaten out everything and kept players long after other games have died off, so you know what, maybe it will never die. My favorite meme is that long after the sun is burned out, humanity is on some far off planet in a galaxy we've never heard of, someone will still still be asking Treyarch for Zombies Chronicles 2 on Black Ops 3. Now go watch this really cool video from my girlfriend who did a deep dive into the chaos story and what all of it really means under the surface. Thank you for watching, love you, Bye bye